her to take the field at any level. And we were surprised to find out there's an epidemic of injuries among young athletes in America. Every year, nearly a million and a half kids suffer a sports-related injury serious enough to warrant a trip to the emergency room. Our story tonight is not about the football concussions we've all heard so much about, but something that actually harms many more kids, overuse. A young baseball player throwing too many pitches, for example, or a girl playing too much soccer on still developing knees. It's happening all across the country, but we found a striking microcosm of the problem in the patients and staff at one clinic in Northern California. Pediatric orthopedic surgeon Rob Pandya is scrubbing in for his Tuesday morning operations at Oakland Children's Hospital's clinic in Walnut Creek, California. So three or four ACLs today? Three ACLs today. Three ACLs. Is this a typical day? It's a pretty standard day for me. Kind of from week to week, I'll be two to three ACLs, a bunch of different sports injuries, so very, very typical. All three of today's operations are on young soccer players with torn anterior cruciate ligaments. A 12-year-old boy, an 18-year-old girl, and 16-year-old Michaela Berenger. Okay, good. How far can you bend it back? Today will be her second time in Dr. Pandia's operating room. Any new pains come up? A little more than a year ago, he repaired the ligament in her right knee after it gave way as she ran down the field. Okay. Right side still treating you all right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Michaela went through nine months of rehab and had barely returned to playing at full speed when she was hit in a game and tore her left ACL. Are you thinking about getting back on the field right now? It's like the one thing on my mind. That you want to get back out there or whether you should or not? Both. Yeah. We're, what's your gut telling you right now as you sit here today about to do your second ACL surgery? That I should get back on the field. You should. And why is that important to you? It's like my life. It's the only thing that like I'm really passionate about. Mm -hmm. And I have like a great support, support system. I have a great team. I have great parents, great friends that are telling me that I shouldn't give up. And I don't want to. <laughs> Michaela is just one of thousands of female soccer players in America who will suffer a torn knee ligament this year. It's kind of the, you know, the kind of the plague of, of female soccer players, just the multiple ACL injuries. Um, it's just such part of the sport. And, you know, by the time these kids are 12 or 13, they know someone on their team who had an ACL injury. And they have multiple ACL injuries. It's almost the norm now. You tear one side, you're going to tear the other side. Or you tear that same one again, you have another surgery. It is crazy to me that all these 12-year-olds know what an ACL is. I mean, I didn't know what an ACL was, but I certainly <laughs> didn't know anybody who had surgery. Right. But this is the new norm. Yeah, it's, it's almost like it's just, it's, they're not even surprised. Michaela's second ACL surgery took nearly two hours. Dr. Pandia replaced the torn ligament with a new one he built using one of her hamstring muscles. Hey guys. Hey. Everything went great. Okay, oh, everything went cool. awesome. Her okay. parents, who are both nurses, know the drill all too well. Okay. Ready? Yeah. They started another nine month rehab process the very next day, hooking Michaela up to a machine to keep her leg moving up to 12 hours a day. How likely do you think it is that she's back playing soccer again? Do you want her to get back on the field? I, I do. I, we enjoy watching her play, and especially when she's playing well. And I, I think she really likes it. But, you know, it had to be her choice. Do you get nervous watching her get back on the field? Yes. Yeah, every time. Many kids can and do come back and compete aggressively after ACL surgery. Okay, let's turn it up. But some also develop osteoarthritis in as little as 10 years. And that can put them out of athletic action for life. I tell these kids and these parents, I want you to be able to run around with your kids when you're 30, mm -hmm. not have that sacrifice right now just to simply get back to play soccer when you're 13. But, I mean, that's a hard conversation to have with a kid because they can't even imagine being 30, right? Right, exactly. Yeah. They're just thinking about, they want to get out there and play. Good to see you. Good. How are you doing? It's not just soccer players. So what's a big sport to get back to? Swimming. Swimming? Okay. Dr. Pandia's clinic is also filled with young gymnasts. Play around off back handspring. Okay. And wrestlers. And they're still a little small and still in the knee, okay? And baseball players. There it is. The American Sports Medicine Institute says that since 2000, it's seen a five-fold increase in serious elbow and shoulder injuries among youth baseball players. Very nice. 14-year-old Jesus Hernandez swinging the bat under the watchful eye of his grandmother, Kitty Brown. Oh. 
had his shoulder repaired by Dr. Pandia earlier this year. Very nice. And did that put you out of the game for a little while? Yeah, it took me, put me out for about eight months. What was that like, not being able to play baseball for eight months? It was awful. It was awful. <laughs> He was like a caged animal. <laughs> then they released him to start swinging the bat. He went in there and swung the bat. Didn't swing it a little, swung it a lot. Very, very nice. Kids are doing a lot of whatever sport they choose, between private training, team practices, tournaments, and playing for multiple teams. It's not uncommon to hear of girls playing 140, 150 games a year. So what does that do? to a 14-year-old girl's body. I think the body's just not prepared for that. I mean, your females are still growing at that time point. And I think a lot of times people think about, well, you know, the problem is year-round sports. Not necessarily year-round sports. It's doing the same thing year-round. Um, it's just like anything else. If, you know, in life, you're doing the same thing repetitively again and again and again, the body's just going to break down from that. So how's the leg feeling overall? Um, it's been hurting a little bit. Jessica Vieira Ramirez is a soccer goalie trying to come back from her latest injury. A torn quad muscle. Why don't you bend it all the way back? <laughs> For both Jessica and her mom, Denine, visits to Dr. Pandia have become almost routine. Let's check everything else here. Give me the rundown of the injuries you've had. Biggest one would be my ankle. I did have reconstruction surgery on it. I, I guess I'll start from the bottom. Mm. So three ankle sprains on the right, which is why I had the surgery. Um, moving up the torn quad right now. I did have a hairline fracture in my pelvis. Uh, I broke my collarbone, just that snapped in half, <laughs> and then dislocated my shoulder twice, and then had one concussion. When she starts from her toes and comes up to the top with all the injuries, do you ever think, enough's enough? Well, you know what? I've seen kids get more injuries, and they don't play sports. Yeah. Jessica used to play multiple sports, but a few years ago she was pressured, like so many other promising young athletes, to specialize. I would say freshman year of high school, I had to make the choice between soccer and basketball. And so I really tried doing both, but the varsity coach for, um, for soccer is just like, no, you just got it. You really got to just choose one now. Jessica, who has dual U.S. and Mexican citizenship, developed into a good enough goalie to be invited to play for Mexico's national youth team. But players who aren't as good as she is also feel the pressure to pick a single sport. How early are kids specializing now? I've seen kids as young as seven or eight. Seven uh, or eight? Can you tell at seven or eight if a kid's going to be the next Derek Jeter or the next Tiger Woods? Not at all, and I think that uh, a lot of parents, they, they kind of see stories, they, you know, they hear about Tiger Woods, and they hear about these people started playing sports at a young age, and they feel that that's the way that they need to go. When I was growing up, it was the, in high school, for example, it was the three-sport athlete that was idealized. If you had letters in three sports, that made you uh, the epitome of what an athlete was all about. Professor Jay Coakley is the author of a widely used textbook on the role of sport in society. He says most athletes today don't get the chance to play multiple sports. Where is that pressure to specialize coming from? As public programs have faded beginning in the 1980s and through today, uh, private programs have taken their place. And they've been developed by what I call youth sport entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, it would be impossible to, be, to make your living as a sport entrepreneur just with a single season. So they've come up with a rationale for playing multiple seasons in a single sport during a given year, going to camps between the seasons, going to tournaments pre and post season so that they have dues paying members 12 months a year, which keeps the food on the table for them and their families. This girls' soccer tournament in October, for example, drew over 400 teams who paid nearly $400,000 in entry fees alone. Many of the girls on these fields and their parents shared the same dream. These girls want to play college. You worked your tail off to get into these showcases because those are where the coaches are for Pac-12 or your Big Ten. Those showcases are tournaments which college coaches attend to assess young talent. Injuries have caused Jessica to miss several showcases where she was hoping to be offered a scholarship. Her mom says without one, 
she won't be able to afford college. She's got to get back out there. And there's that whole pressure. And I think part she's of it's her, her own pressure. Because, because why? Own. Why does she have to get back out there? To and be seen by who? Thing the colleges are saying to her right now, we need to see you on the field, and we need to see you not injured right now. We need to see you at your top game. Right. We'll get there. When we spoke, Jessica and Deneen were hoping Dr. Pandia would clear her to play in time for a big showcase over Thanksgiving. But the biggest one is the one in November. I think that's an absolutely reasonable call. Jessica and her mom have always followed his advice, but he says not everyone is so patient. The interesting thing is a lot of times the parents, the first question they are asking is, when can you get back on the field? What does that tell you that the first question out of some parents' mouth is, how, how quickly can you get back on the field? I really think it just it totally tells me where parents' priorities are. Um, and I think it all comes from a good place. I think that um, a lot of these parents want their kids to succeed. Well, my kid's on that path to become a professional athlete, or he wants to get that Division One scholarship. And it's like, you, you know, your son just had a major injury, you know, or your daughter. And I think that that's it really our priorities are not in the right place. And there are plenty of leagues and coaches and companies pushing those misplaced priorities with everything from year-round youth tournaments to slick video resumes I go to Jackson Liberty High School. for young players hoping to impress college recruiters. We've institutionalized this system within which these sport entrepreneurs are not deliberately deceiving parents, but implicitly they're deceiving them by saying that they can take them to where the parents want their children to go. The next level. The next level. What they may not tell parents is just how hard it is to get to that next level. In soccer, for example, there are just 2,000 college scholarships a year and hundreds of thousands of kids chasing them. If you were going to a racetrack and there was a horse that had 100 to 1 odds on it, you'd never bet on it. But people are making that bet on their children every day. Y'all good? Yep. All right. Katie Brown is making that bet on the baseball dreams of her grandson, Jesus. What do you want for your grandson out of all this? I want the best. I want him to be a baseball player. And where do you think he'll play? A's, Oakland A's. The Oakland A's. Oakland A's. That's, that's his dream. He wants, he wants to be an Oakland A's player. Okay. Jesus told us he hopes the A's will draft him right out of high school. Beautiful. The odds of getting a Major League Baseball are so small. Why do you think you might be able to do it? Because I can hit better than most kids my age. I look at all the other kids and how they hit. It's not like mine. Let's get back up the middle. That's where the money is. Beautiful. Very nice. You think you've got it? Yeah. I got the edge. <laughs> I got the edge. But the day we talked, his edge was dulled a bit. Not just by his surgically repaired shoulder, but also by a foot injury he just suffered in practice. He, he still plays. The upper part body is still working, so... He's playing with a sprained ankle? No. He, well, he can stand, and he can throw still. And because his foot hurts, doesn't mean that he can't catch a ball. So you put a Band-Aid on him, and, and <laughs> yeah. out he goes. Out he goes. Do you ever look at one of your patients who's had multiple injuries and say, just stop? Yes, and, and I... You know, and do I, they listen to you? Most of the time they don't. They still keep going.